tell you one thing. Stop <laughs> wasting money, okay? It's nice, but stop wasting this money. This was a holiday gift for myself, man. Okay, yeah. The, the BMW, only thing I've ever spent money on. You, next year, you're gonna be broke, bro. And then you'll have to take me in. No, dude. You're gonna support both of us. That's no. definitely my god, baby. Let's go. You're so stupid. Shut up, Brad. I'm trying to help you out for real. This is this is really convenient, eh? <laughs> no, I said we get back to back pods. I went to Tom Spring. Oh, this is oh, amazing. Good. What's good? What's good? What's up, bro? What's good? What's <laughs> Pretty much my good friend at this point. What's good, Polo? What's up, buddy? You guys are like best buddies now. You could say that. I would say that. I've been telling Polo, people. Polo, how that. did you? How did you see this guy's DM of all people? That's what I was curious about. Because this he went to Steiny. Steiny landed you, so it's pretty big. Pretty big guess for you, Steiny. No, I know. I've been flexing this all week, bro. Thank you. You've done a lot for me. <laughs> no, um, I'll be checking my message request sometime. And he was at the top. So we got lucky. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I'm not going to lie, bro. It was like a six month ago thing. And then out of nowhere. Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you at my gym with the trainer. Yeah. You uh, train. You train really consistently. I'm off and on. Sometimes like the longest I've been consistent, probably like three months. Do you have do you have a specific goal? Yeah, I'm trying to get I'm trying to right now. I'm like. 165 pounds. I'm trying to be like 185. You want to gain weight? Yeah. Yeah. So, Wait, he goes to zoo? Yeah. yeah, I'll be uh, yeah, I'll be there. So you yeah. know this guy? Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have ever talked before or no? Uh briefly in, in the front. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're like, I'm gonna give him his space until no, I'm ready to move in I'm with not, the camera. I'm not a I'm not cloud chasing like that, man. I just say what up. Yeah. yeah uh man. should we get the whole squad in here too? <laughs> yeah, you gotta <laughs> we, we gotta stop well, renting Airbnbs for pods, yeah. eh? Everyone just goes. <laughs> it's a dope spot. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it's all good. What you what you what what you say? I said just what have you been up to? You living in LA now? Yeah. How's life? Shit, man. I've been um, I've been um, I've been gone for the first four months of the year, and just moving around a lot. I've been to Paris. I was gone for my birthday, and um, I did some shows. I've been doing a lot of shit. Yeah, weren't you just international somewhere? Yeah, I was in Paris for Fashion Week. Oh shit! No, yeah, I got it. I got a question about this chain. Like, this is, this is outrageous. Wait, hold on, hold Let me on, show bro. You big boy Cuban, real quick. Look at this. It was a custom Cuban. It's a B link. Okay, listen. This is so, a G link. Hold on, when you posted, I gotta say, listen. <laughs> Have you seen you a Cuban this big? Okay, bro. Well, you nice. asked he, him that's if he's 30. seen a Cuban that big. Yeah. You think he hasn't seen a Cuban that big? Have you? Come on, bro. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure though. He has. Okay. Okay, whatever. When you posted that and everyone's like, yo, how are you going to charge it? That's mm. what they say. Like, what are you going to like put it on the charger? It's a charger. Is it a real iPhone? Yo. Yeah, it's a, it's a real iPhone. The, does, is it like functional? Like, yeah. Do you use it for anything? No. Just if I want to play a video just to show off. That it's Fuck okay. it. Video. Let's talk about how did that idea, what made you yeah. want to do that? It really originated off of, uh, I'm a, like, I'm a big fan of like, UFC uh, boxing and shit. So I, I like I pay close attention to like Adesanya, and I seen him with the uh, with the Apple Watch chain, and I'm like, damn, that's a dope idea. And I was trying to think of something to commemorate my homie because I got a homie named B Doggy, so that's what the B and the dog is for. And it was originally supposed to be an Apple Watch playing a flip grandma just moments of me and him together. Oh, but nice. then he ended up. Icebox ended up upgrading it to a whole iPhone. So when people first see it, they like, why the fuck would he get an iPhone in the chain? But it's a, it's pretty deeper than that. Who, who's your favorite UFC fighters? Like top three? I like Adesanya. I like the uh, the guy who just lost. Usman? Usman. Usman. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, I was going to, because I thought the iPhone was removable. Yeah, it's it like is. Some, so what, you can play stuff on there. Because I was worried at first, because I was like, what if, what if hypothetically you're with your girl and then your side girls start hitting you up and it's displayed for everybody? I ain't no side girl, man. Okay. okay, well that's <laughs> that'd be the that'd be the <laughs> biggest trying to get him caught up. What's going no, on? That was just a concern bro. that I had what if the I was fuck wearing are you it. Talking about, bro. If I was wearing it, that'd be a concern. Bro, shut the you're fuck up. You're not gonna put your trap fizzy on a chain. That's just stupid. <laughs> Come on, dude. Jesus, okay. get it together. Let's talk about Chicago. Let's talk about where you came from. <laughs> uh, let's but, talk about let's talk about where, how you started. Like, how did you get into rap and why why did you decide it was for you? I, I knew how to rap since I was a kid, like a little kid, like shorty, like probably like nine. I made my first song and I have been like rapping all the way up until I got into high school when I took it seriously. And it's really just like me finding a passion for it and me knowing that I wasn't going to do shit else. Like, man, 
I ain't finna play basketball. I ain't finna do nothing. I'm just rap. I, I was gonna ask, did you? I know just coming from Chicago too, because you said I saw an interview where you said the two biggest things are rapping and basketball. Yeah, and I know City. you're a Derrick Rose fan. So did you ever did you ever hoop or try and do that? Yeah, I tried to hoop. I was I was weak when I was a little kid, and I got old. I was decent, but you just knew it wasn't gonna work out. Yeah. How'd you know you were good at rapping though? Because you said you knew you were good at it. Was it just someone oh, told you or? I just always knew. I always had a lot of confidence when it came to rapping too. Like before I ever really was on the forefront with making a song, like I had the few songs that I had, I felt that I was so good. Like as far as my lyrical ability that I tell people like I'm the best rapper from Chicago. And they're like, man, hell no. <laughs> and we are arguing all day long. And then when I actually got to a point where I got far enough, like, as far as the new generation of rappers, that became an argument. Yeah. Like, you know? And it's just me having that strong belief in myself. Do you think that it's important to have that sort of belief, to have that actual success? Like, to be known as one of the, one of the great rappers, you have to believe it first? Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. It's easier to believe it, though, before it happened. It's like, when you actually make it, though, that's when the doubts kick in. Because now you got to keep your reputation going. Keep yeah, it up. How, how hard does that get now? Now that you're like, you know, you're like kind of like at the top. How much more competitive is it now to like be the best? Now that you're like in the mix, um, it's more competitive with yourself now. Yeah, it's yeah. more comp competition with myself more than anything because that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to outdo my last <laughs> achievements. I find this really interesting with with music and artists in general. Is like, do you ever feel like you get to a point where you've made you know so many albums or you've put out so many so many songs that you kind of like don't want to keep recreating the same sort of content and it gets hard to make new content, but still like your style. Yeah. Because a lot of times there's so many songs that didn't come out because I felt like it sounded like some shit I done did before. Or it'd be a lot of times where it's just like I run into a wall and feeling like I done said damn near everything I can say. Because you're not, you, you be far removed away from what, made you 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 know absolutely like we and i'm living a whole nother lifestyle separate than what i came up in yeah yeah so it's harder to find it's inspiration a, yeah it's the same thing happens with a lot of like just content creators in general it's like where you start is not always where you continue to go yeah. but what do you do to continue to to challenge yourself in that in that realm like how do you continue to make music that you know mean something to you but isn't obviously the same it's not indicative of the beginning it was now it's beginning like it's about what you're doing now, but how do you still have the same heart in it when it's not? Because I still got, like, I still want to be one of the best. I don't want, I don't really rap for money. Like, I don't really even think about the check that's at the end of all the work that I'm doing. I'm really doing it because I got a passion for it. I'm really doing it because, like, I just want to be one of the best at, yeah. at rapping. Even when you didn't have money? Yeah, for sure. Well, you're still too. no. I was I was definitely rapping for the money back then. I'm talking about now. Yeah, like, okay. Where I'm at now. What was your first big check for like anything rap related? The day I signed. Yeah. Nothing yeah. big before that. No hell no. I probably was getting. I used to do. Yeah, wait. Like, let's talk about like when you had to do like the the smaller shows. Like, what was that like in your bags? Like, that? yeah, I do used to make be on a, like a homecoming tour, like right before I popped off, and I was going doing little shows. And in Chicago doing little homecomings, I'll probably perform for all of like five minutes. Really? <laughs> what do they pay you for that? Probably like twenty five hundred dollars here and there, hmm. fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's not bad. At the and beginning. I'm stacking this little money up that I'm getting. <laughs> but you still got like you still have a squad then, so you got to take care of everybody. And all that. Like, does the oh, pressure no. ever? Like Everybody that? paying their own way back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's some now shit. <laughs> if you ain't had no money to get there, we want you want coming. I like yeah. that. Hey, you hear that? What the hell, bro? I paid what you. I'm mean? just kidding. You bought me lunch today. <laughs> yeah, don't. Play. Um, <laughs> what was the first? What was like? Was there a moment when you felt like things like tipped and things really started to take off, like a certain song pop out and I made yeah. pop out. Yeah, that was out. huge. Yeah, we still bang because it was I mean, like pop, pop out is. It's such a fucking banger. Bro. So like, fun, you could bro. you could play it at any time. Like yeah. especially when you're going out, pop up. We did slaps, we did one bro. live show ever, and I remember I was like, Kyle, what song are we walking out to? And he said, Dude, this has to be pop out. 
it's when we walked Papa out just, banging. It's a banger. Like, it just yeah. slaps, bro. Yeah, I feel like Papa Out was too in the beginning of that TikTok era yeah. and that thing. So It went let's, viral on that. Let's talk about the social media stuff a little bit. Do you mm-hmm. think that uh, social media has like a large impact on artists' success now? Like to be able to be successful as an artist now, do you think you have to like live in that social I feel like media it, space? I feel like it been like that for like the past damn five, six years. Like a lot of people are like internet sensations. Probably Some people more, are more you know? viral on yeah. the internet than they are with their music, actually. Do you do yeah. you ever look at certain artists and you're like, damn, bro, like if it wasn't for social media, this shit wouldn't be a banger? Like they kind of ride that TikTok wave, but if they didn't have that TikTok, it'd be like, dude, is this even a good song? I feel like that's for a lot of music, though. I'm not going to lie. Even I, the good songs, like you don't really know. Like, because it put it to everybody ear. Yeah. Back then, you probably had to follow a certain system. Like, let's push this to radio. Yeah. Let's make sure they play this fucking song eight times and ten times in the day. So do you think it's easier now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you're actually really right on that because if you think about it, like even if the older people, like our parents' age or they're on TikTok, could hear his songs, that would have never heard it before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the viral nature of the But things, Met- right? we did Metro Boomin like a month ago and he said that he has artists come into the studio that say, yo, I'm like this song is for TikTok. Like they're not even making it about the music anymore. That's crazy, bro. I think you would fall by the wayside doing some shit like that. You can't making, have that mentality. Making music just for social media. Yeah. Yeah. What what part in so like what part in your strategy to social media play though? Like what do you have to do social media? You almost wise? got eleven million on IG. Yeah, because your, your IG goes popping. Your IG goes crazy. Yeah. It's really only time I I'm looking towards social media is ro- is for rollouts because that's really important in music. But uh, outside of that, I'm not thinking like, oh, let me make this song because IG might like it or TikTok might like. That's crazy. But but as far like what I think what Kyle was asking though is like in regards to social media in general, do you do you do certain like things for your music? Like do you is it how important is social media to your music and to like dropping and all that? Like you said for rollouts, is there like a certain way that you do it? Yeah, like m- most of the time I have to uh, get over my label. We meet. They give me some ideas of what they think I should do with my rollout. I get them ideas like when I did the Kaisenat in uh, commercial before one of my songs. That was my idea. Like I wrote out the treatment for the um, for the commercial, and um, thought to get Kai in it because I knew he was pretty big. Yeah. But that was a that was an idea of me and the label collabed on. Yeah. As far as getting him, but just little shit, you know that's gonna catch a lot of people's attention. Yeah. yeah. How how big is the streaming stuff then for you? Like jumping in people's streams, does that help? Like like in a on a big way or a we small saw, way? Or? We all saw Aiden Ross's obviously. Yeah, I feel like. Now that like streaming, podcasts, all that is a part of hip hop now. Like you gotta you gotta go out there and do that. It's you funny. Can't just yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to tell you, but it's funny because you see now like every rapper is getting in somebody's stream. Yeah. So it's like they gotta keep up or like they're behind almost. Yeah. Like you saw little baby twenty one, you're doing it. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> really fucking wild, program, bro, Everyone's man. doing it, bro. <laughs> yeah, crazy. that Twitch shit. We just had Aiden <laughs> Ross on. That shit's just they're taking it to a new level now. That shit's like mega viral. It's going through your playlist too because obviously with Rapstar, Martin and Gina, just all of it, what do you think differentiates you? Because those are some of those are from three years ago, but you can hear them and they're still bangers. And a lot of times now with the new rappers, like a song gets old after three months, two your months. Your shit's really like melodic though too, right? Like your style. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think is that unique factor that makes you different than everybody else? I feel like... I, I can only touch on my process. Like, I really take music serious. I really take my time. I'm really intentional on what I say. I'm, I'm going to yeah. make sure that every bar relate to the last one, you know? Yeah. Like, it's going to all flow. And, and I'm, I'm going to try to tell a story. I'm going to try to say some real shit. I feel like that's what lasts more than anything. It, sure. Is it is it true? Like, I think on a Genius interview, you were talking about, like, you try to have some bar in your song that is like very memorable. Do you do that with all your songs? Yes, for sure. Is like it just because you just think it's going to stick more? Or? Like, it's just a one line to really like, I almost say like, w- when the artists are say that they need to have a bar that's a caption, it's almost like that. Like Got something you. that's going to stick with somebody like, damn, he just said that. I could like think a Siri line. line. I could think, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. That went hard. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what was that line? Only bitch I have a conversation with yeah, Siri. Siri. Yeah, that's <laughs> stuck. Like, and I'm sure every every chick was Stiney like, "No, it's my caption." Now. On him, <laughs> <Straight up. laughs> not yet. 
It's on his inner thigh, for sure. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's what's hard. your process to finding out, like, how those bars fit in your songs? Is it, like, do you start there and then go around that? Or Sometimes I start there, or sometimes, like, I'm just catching the flow. And I'll get a reaction from my engineer. If I get a reaction from him, because sometimes it's hard to get a reaction out of him. If I get a reaction from him, I know it's, that that was a strong line. Yeah. You always work the same guy? Yeah. I've been working with the same... For the most part, I've been working with the same engineer for the past for the past four or five years. How how like, key damn. is having like a really good engineer for like upcoming artists? That's is it like, everything? Hell yeah. I I just learned in rapping, like I need a specific mic. I just learned that. Really? What you mic know? is it? Uh I think it's a song. I don't I can't really tell you. I'm gonna end up well, lying. Like how'd what's, you, so, <laughs> what's so special about that? Yeah, mic? how'd you learn that? Hearing it. Like I, I like it's a lot of shit I'm still learning in rap. Like, it took me a while to get with somebody like Southside and understanding that it's a difference. And no knock to the up-and-coming producers, but somebody who sees and you hear the difference. And it took me a while to, like, learn a lot of shit when it comes to Mm hip-hop. So me just recording for so long, it's something that just popped up in my head. Like, damn, this mic sound way more clear. I need to be on this every time I'm rapping. Yeah. Let's talk about the creative process a little bit. You know, um, the rap star, there was some like, I don't know how much controversy about like you writing all your own stuff. Mm-hmm. You always write all your own music. Yeah. all Every every song I ever wrote. Every bar? Every bar. Every Everything. album I ever put out. It was all me. You don't, you don't think What about think like the melodies and stuff too? Like is everything. there anyone else? Everything. The so, only person helping me is the producer. And he, by making a beat. Yeah. I, 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 I would grow open to... Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Getting a writer somewhere, getting getting with writers somewhere down the line, but I would never let somebody full fledged write a song for me. And it'd be a specific lane, like a song for the ladies, a, a right. pop song, Something a you haven't done. club record. But if yeah. I'm talking about being back at home and what I'm going through, can't nobody write that for me. So on, on that topic, uh, Martin and Gina, are there certain inspirations to these songs? Are there certain women in your life that, you know, like, you had a heartbreak, you had a heartache. Video. I really yeah. want to talk, talk about, about that. that. It was really <laughs> me being around women. And I used to feel like m- my music wasn't getting spins from them because I wasn't making girls songs. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, like, every time we get in the car, it, from every artist, it was like, from every artist that, like, do the same shit as me, but they was just making those love songs. That's what you hear when we got yeah. in the car. I'm like, damn, I must be slacking, so. That's where, the, where I really found the inspiration to even make So there's no specific song. woman? No. What no. about um, <laughs> something Something I was thinking about is, obviously everyone knows in rap star, you say 2,000 a minute. Mm-hmm. What about when your rate goes up? Do you have to make a new song and increase? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's going to be still the same Man, you're concept. You're a fucking dick. <laughs> it's going to be still wanna, the same I want to ask about Papa because I really like that song. Um, so how did that song like come about? Since that was the first big one, it'd be cool to hear about that. Yeah. Um, I had made that song in Atlanta. So you started it? I had made the song in Atlanta before I had signed to Columbia. I just made the hook. That's all I did. And around that time, I had writer's block. So probably this a month prior to me signing, I, I, I signed uh, Barry Line. She was the person who signed me. Um, she was working at Columbia at the time. She put me in a stew with TJ, and his A&R was that Lou. And... I, we going through beats all day trying to make a new song, and I played this. They like, you ain't got shit, and I played that. And they like, man, hell no, you going to jump on that. And uh, I, I did my verse that day. TJ had sent it back to me probably like a week later. And we we I pulled up in New York just to come out there for New Year's, and we ended up shooting the video. So when you heard when you heard that song, did you think it would be as, as big as it was? Everybody was telling me that, like, Man, this a this a hit. This a banger. I I wasn't really thinking about it, mm-hmm. and then I just dropped the song out of the blue. Like my label was calling, like, "What the fuck is you doing? <laughs> like, you can't just drop you shit drop on your on? own." Like, I dropped it on YouTube. The you, video, or just so you put it out with them, without them knowing? Yeah, oh like my they God. had to go behind and put it on Apple and Spotify. Oh, and no, fuck. And, but it was going crazy, and then they had a meeting and they clapping for me and shit. <laughs> That's good. It worked out. Okay. Damn, what, what did that, What is there any like uh, numbers that you know that that song did? This one trending first came out, like YouTube trending. YouTube trending? So my shit, our shit was number one trending. 
And that's really why we had the meeting. Like, damn, it's going up. We're going to push it. Yeah, that's crazy. that's crazy. I think one of my, my favorite songs, too, Three Headed Go. Mm-hmm. I think one of your best verses is your second verse in that song. Yeah. But that's you, Lil Baby, and Dirk, right? Yeah. So when did how did that song come together? Was that your first track with Dirk and Baby? Yeah, with them together, I have been made a song with Dirk. You know, we both from the rack. And who who like leads that? Like who's like, yo, this is my track and I'm putting Dirk and Baby on it? No, that that was Dirk. That was all his work. Like he sent me the song. This I if I'm not mistaken, this one, it was the pandemic. Yeah. He yeah. sent he sent it to me. I was recording in the crib around that time. And I just laid the verse and shit. And How, sent it back to him. Is there pressure on you when you are working with those two guys as opposed to like anybody else or you just do your thing? Around that time, I was still up and coming, I feel like. So I person I took it personally, like, no, I gotta run this. Yeah. What's your process like? Are you are you fast? Is it like your how quick you turn around songs or like how how long would that song take for you to, to give your verse? That one I know it only took me like a day. Is that typical for most of your music? Most of my music, I ain't gonna lie, it take me a while. Like yeah. I don't really just I don't send verses straight back unless I'm feeling it that day or Sometimes I'll have an Adderall night where I make a lot of songs in there. <laughs> Stani would enjoy that. Nah, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> okay. Hit me up after this. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so well, that was probably the first DM you sent them, man. You need, if you ever need Addy, <laughs> that's when he time responded. Of the night, just I sent it on know. my Adderall Anytime. night. No, I sent it on my Adderall night. He responded on his Adderall night. I love that. Yeah. So, so I, I got a question in regards to that. Like, what do you start with? Do you start with a concept? Do you start with a beat? Do you start with like, a story, like how do you start your, your music? Sometimes I have some shit that I already wrote and I'm just looking for a beat to fit it. Sometimes I like, everybody say that I got an unorthodox way of recording because I take eight beats that I listen to and I like and I put them all in one session. Wait, wait, you, what do you mean? So like I'm listening to five beats. I'm listening to probably like 30, but out of out of the 30, I'm going to pick eight of them. I'm going to tell the engineer, put all of these into the same in recession. one project. Yeah, one project. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to listen through them and go for one by one. So I may have liked it when I heard it on the speaker, but when I hear it in the headphones, it don't register. So I'm like, go to the next one, go to the next one. I'll probably do three songs in that one session. Well, just with all those same lyrics that you wrote? No, or? just like... Okay, I did that song. Let me go to the oh, next okay. one. I did that song. Let me go to the next one. What about what about your studio sessions? Is there a certain vibe you gotta have every time? I know everybody's just kind of different. I just gotta chill before I record. But like, do you, I, is it like a party in there or is it like yo, I'm doing my nah, thing? No, hell no. Nah. I can't work like that. I can't even work with too many people being in the stool because I'ma think about too many opinions. Yeah. I gotta be damn near by myself. Yeah, I, just because we've gone a couple times and it's either like a, a party in there or it's like this guy's like locked in, no one's in there. If it's a party, I ain't getting no work done. <laughs> when did you go? You went to the studio? I've been invited two times. Okay, but you didn't go. I did go. Oh, okay. 42 Doug and Roddy Rich one time. Oh, interesting. And they immediately said, who the fuck is that they guy? They said, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's funny though. Um, All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this, but it's only because how how much does it piss you off the narrative, right? Like we've seen on social media, they're doing the whole like he unfollowed Gunna bullshit. Like, how do you feel about that? I don't know if it's true or not, but it ain't. I don't feel no type of way for real. It was just me seeing us because I had been seeing it, but I didn't care. I don't really respond to social media shit. But it was like me seeing a certain a specific headline, like you worded away, like I'm trend following it, knowing that's not me. That's the only re- real reason I addressed the situation. But like. I don't really. Yeah. Yeah, you tend to stay out of all drama. Yeah, I don't really that. get into none of that, man. I unfollowed him, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're stupid. Well, I did. Yo, you're fucking stupid. No, you didn't. My, did you? Check my following. Bro. I didn't follow him in the first place. Check I'm my following right Okay, now, but bro. how do we know you followed him in the first place, bro? Oh, I unfollowed is him. It a real, is it a real thing, though? Like, people just like, they're not fucking with people who, you know, have been in trials and shit like that? or. I mean, yeah, it looks like it. Right. His yeah. nickname is Bradley Plea Deal Martin. We're okay, saying, you know, before, <laughs> hey, before anything not. happens here, motherfucker, bro. I, motherfucker, I went to the, the fucking court system to keep my gym open. Okay, what does it have to bitch? do? Yeah, for court I, system. I took, I took, bro, I, I went to court for way worse than that. So bro, I don't like want to hear your bullshit. Like what, bitch? 
I went fucking 15 times. I did fucking 90 and a 65. Oh, okay, yeah. 90 and a 65. Fucking sped, you pussy. I think I, I did like, like 130 before. You. What are you whipping these days? Fuck it. Uh, I, I just got a new, I got a new Cullinan. Damn. Yeah, that's How possible. many cars you got? 10. 10? <laughs> <What's> 10 <laughs> okay. uh, which one do you drive the most though? Yeah, what's your daily? The Cullinan. I don't drive though. You just sit. You sit in the. In the, in the Damn, okay. Do you ever take anything out just for fun? Like I'm gonna take this for a spin. Yeah, it'll be like if I ain't drove this car in a minute. Like, damn, I forgot how this bitch ride. And then, do you let your boys take the cars out or no? I used to. They be fucking my shit up. <laughs> yeah, always, bro. <laughs> I used to let them drive. They wore that out. Yes. Can you, can you tell us? The, can you tell us the collection? I got a i8. I got a, a Corvette. I got a Durango. I got a BMW X6. I got a BMW X7. I got a Tesla. I got, I got the color. Now I got a bulletproof truck in Chicago. I got a G Wagon, a Maybach. God, do you damn, have the Maybach bro. truck or the sedan? I got the sedan. The sedan's yeah. dope. Yeah, you sit in the back in that, right? Yeah, because he don't drive. Those are fucking so you dope, always bro. Back. Um, how much is all those fucking cars, man? Probably in total, I probably pay like two, probably close to two. I don't really know. I'm saying like when I bought them. I know. What was your? What was your... I paid cash for my cars. I, I I leased my first car, then I switched it over to a finance just for my credit. But what was anything your... else I bought after that, I paid cash. What was your first big purchase? With wow, money that bro, you made? that's crazy, bro. My first big purchase, I leased the crib out in uh, Calabasas for like a hundred and twenty thousand. Nice. I like... noticed something with Chicago rappers, like. It's all anytime they get to that success, everyone leaves Chicago, which is kind of rare too. Because if it's like Florida or New York, they always like to stay there. Why do you think that is? That because I you you did it, Dirk did it, uh, Kanye, pretty much everybody. Chicago, man, I ain't gonna lie, it's different than them other cities, man. You could probably move around and still be okay. But fucking tour with you, they ain't gonna never forget that. You know, is that is it more like that's the only way to kind of focus on rap and leave the street shit. And then I'm saying they could go work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They could work both ways. Like, you can get wrapped up in, in the wrong shit or the wrong shit could catch up to you. So that's, mm. That ain't no city you won't just be staying in. Do you think uh, Chief Keef Sosa is the GOAT? <laughs> I love these questions. I love these <laughs> I questions. think he won the GOATs for sure. I love Sosa. He, inf he an inspiration he for influenced you? influenced the world. I know. He was an inspiration for me. I didn't personally, go down that road. Personally inspiration? Yeah, I don't know if you ever saw this, but he lived in um, Hinsdale, and they used to take the ATVs out. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's like the bougiest neighborhood, and every day, him and <laughs> he would take video. the ATVs out. Have you seen that? Yeah. And they kicked him out of the neighborhood, and he moved to LA. Damn. Yeah. You say, what what, what neighborhood? Hinsdale. Hinsdale Central. Yeah. But, uh, no, yeah, I love him. So, what, what else are you working on right now? I got the uh, I got a project with me and me and Southside, produced by Southside Eight Hundred Eight Mafia. Oh shit! His camp, you know, that's really it. Though so I'll I'll be working at, on a few projects at once, but this the one that I'm focused on. And I'm curious, drop. do you hand select? Like, if you listen to a track, do you say, "Yo, I need so and so on this track"? Hell yeah, you can hear it. Though. Yeah, like damn, this nigga sound cold on here. Do you have anybody that you like just know that you, like your favorite guy to collab with or anybody you just love working with? Uh, I got a good chemistry with TJ, of course. Yeah. And I always end up making some shit with Dirt. Yeah. What about, I was listening to this too, because you had a relationship with Juice World too. Because mm -hmm. I know you guys did Flex together. Mm -hmm. What was that relationship like? That was my dog. I feel like as far as sound we didn't make a lot of music, but as far as our sound, they complement each other well. Like we would have went up like that through time. That song's so good, bro. Okay. Um, have you worked with anyone specifically that's like motivated you or influenced you to to want to be better? Not that obviously you motivate yourself, but anyone that's came in, you know, to your circle or in a song with you that you're like, oh, I really like what this person did. Like anything that you were like, damn, I want to step my shit up, or that motivated you to be better that you worked with in this industry. Juice World was that person that made me feel like, like, yeah, I want to take this shit far. Because when he was fucking with me, I was an upcoming artist. I'm finna drop my first album. 
shit like that. And I'm seeing what he was doing early in his career. Like, yeah. Going on statewide tours, world tours. He was just going crazy, taking fucking jets here. Well, I'm just feeling like, damn, I want to be at this level one day. And as far as like seeing somebody process those crazy to me, it was like being in the studio future one time. Oh, yeah. So like, he, like? Metro Boomin said the exact same thing, bro. He write the shit in his head. Yeah. And it's like, he could probably just nod his head to the beat for a little minute. Every rapper we've ever had on the show always pays respect to Future. Yeah, he knocking out that verse in probably like 10 minutes. So is that intimidating when he just goes and like fucking runs it like that and you're more of a like calculated kind of like writer? No, I'm going to stick to my process, yeah. but I'm going to probably try to take notes and, and I'm, I'm going to try new shit. Like lately I've been trying to get to the microphone and freestyle as opposed to like typing in my phone all day. But like... <clears throat> that don't really like intimidate because I know slow and steady could win a race yeah. sometimes. How does a how does a producer get your attention? Like, you know what I mean? Like you must get tons of beats all the time. How do you like how does like an upcoming producer get your attention? I ain't gonna I, I'm I'm always open to listening to everybody. Like like I check my DMs and shit. Like if somebody can run up on me right now and say, hey, I make beats. Can I send you a pack? I'm gonna tell him, yeah. Like uh, I'm not really bougie to that. Like I I hit anybody out because you never know when you yeah. hit a one. You know. How quickly do you like fly through beats? Like if you open a pack, like how how many seconds is it to like next? Probably like five to ten. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know right away. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. know right away. I'll yeah. get in the session with a producer and piss him off because I'm <laughs> steady next. Trash, next, trash, trash. Yeah. Next, and it ain't even that the shit weak. It just don't register to me. Yeah. You ever done any producing yourself or like do you do any part in that? I try. I get little little beats in my head all the time. I know that's like some telling me to really start doing this shit, but I, I'm I'm I never got around to it yet. I wanted to ask you about Smooth Criminal, the remix you did. Mm -hmm. What was there anything more behind that? Like you cause you did do pretty much a remix to a Michael Jackson song. Yeah. So was that like something you always wanted to do, or is he a huge inspiration for you? No, it, it it wasn't really like that. I fuck with Mike, you know, like coming up, uh, my the older generation of my, of my family just always put you up on his songs and shit. Yeah. But I was really like riding on my way to the studio and I was watching an interview of his. I don't remember what it was about, but I was just watching an interview of his. I'm like, it'd be crazy if I just remix a Michael Jackson song. Yeah, it's bad. And I came in the studio on one, so <laughs> I was turned. Have you ever uh? gone on the studio like pretty on one and just had a crazy session and been like yo that was a complete waste of time oh are, are you saying like fucked up <laughs> you were too sauced in there like <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i did that a lot of times i'm listening to this shit like man what the fuck <laughs> is that, is that sounds a, fire in the moment <laughs> is that a frustrating thing or do you just kind of laugh it off and be like yo next time i gotta sometimes take it it's frustrating because i take the music serious so yeah. i'm like damn i just spent 12 hours in that bitch for nothing Sometimes I'm gonna be pissed off. Yeah, that's funny. How, how has how has like just success overall? Has it has it affected you? Would you say like obviously it's a great thing, right? You have it. Have you dealt with any moments like of you know anxiety or any moments where you're like worried about maintaining it or keeping it or going further? I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit. Are you like as a human like 100 percent happy all the time? Or do you ever deal with like fuck, man, it's not enough, or so I wish it was something else? Yeah, hell yeah. I deal with anxiety a lot. Just, you feel me? Just going through the motions of being a rapper all together. Like, a lot of times I'd be feeling like too hard on myself, though. Like, yeah. I know I'm, I, I know all in all, I'm a great artist. I'm good at what I do. But sometimes just being too wrapped up in the what ifs or if I'm doing that as well as I'm known for doing, like, sometimes. I get so wrapped up in that and you know the self doubts and et cetera. But I always pull myself out of that shit. How do you how do you pull yourself out of yeah. that in those moments? Just being consistent and working. That's that's the only thing. Like I'm the type of person if I don't work, I'm gonna be depressed. Like so just being consistent and working until I find my groove again. Have you had any any times when like you were you were like you were like finding yourself getting low and you're like, fuck, I need to fix this? Any specific moments in your career or your life? Hell yeah, even more so like recently, like 
I, sometimes I need to like move around or like travel. Yeah, yeah, like travel, see some different shit, get in a different space. Cause I be I, I can be at home in LA for damn near thirty days, two weeks. And it's like I'm just repeating the same schedule the same every day, motions, just repeating yeah. the same cycle, and sometimes that'll make me crash. I think I read something yeah. recently that you talked about. You went to Egypt, mm -hmm. and you're talking about how the just the different cultures shock you. Mm -hmm. How what's what's different when you like travel or you perform internationally as opposed to and yeah, and here? how was Egypt? Egypt, I had went out there for my B day. That shit was fun. That shit was What'd fun. you guys do? Like see the pyramids and shit. Yeah, we went inside. We we went inside one. Went up to the top of that bitch. Sink to like a tomb or some shit. We went to the Damn. museum. <laughs> That's lit. He was riding camels and shit. All type of shit. <laughs> you like seeing like different cultures and stuff. Hell yeah! Like I'm I make it like every year I go and travel out the country for my meet it. What's what's your favorite place to go to outside of the U.S. so far? Cabo. <laughs> yeah, Steve would have loved that. Answer. No, we spent a lot of time there. Holy shit! Okay. What yeah, do you no, like about it? Just because it's like it's the vibe. Yeah, the vibe just all together from the moment I touched down till I left. I was just having fun. I was feeling myself. I was, I was. That's when I first start really fucking with the shrooms too. So I was feeling good. Oh, here yes. we go. Jesus. <laughs> no, I was bro, trying to get to that. That's why I was this asking the question earlier. Go Thirty minutes about shrooms now. Yo, <laughs> shut the fuck up, bro. Relax. At least Sorry, have them one you. time. You should okay. just have them one time. I should. I, I should bring them every time. How, when did you start taking them? Uh, that that, that year. Um, why did you start taking them? Just wanting to do something different. Like I came up in the pill era. So everybody do that shit. And that. Some, that's I, that's something that I was falling back off of and hadn't done in so long. I'm like, damn. My my trainer actually, Danny, he was telling me like, man, that shit, it helped you tap into a different space in your mind. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna try it. So has it helped you? Hell yeah. Like as far as getting clarity for certain shit or just just feeling good about myself. Do, yeah. do you do microdosing or you take like large doses? No, I microdose. So yeah. There's been times I took large doses. I was <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. So you you done? Have you, you follow any specific protocol? Like like a month on, month off. Like what was your what was your regimen when you did that? Or you just kind of taking? You just fucking easy. Yeah, bro. it was more so me taking it, but it but at, like. Like you say, probably I'll take a month or two months off before I do it again. Yeah. But when I do, I'll probably go for like that month. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So you say overall it just helps you just like be more clear or be more like level-headed or what? Like yeah, more, more level-headed. Even being being creative sometimes. Like I done made some, some hard-ass shit off of assumes because it's like... Everything going to do something different. Like if I make a song just drunk, I might be a little bit more aggressive. If I'm making a strong <laughs> yeah. song off the shrooms, I'm going to really try to be so creative, though. Yeah. It's it's all different feelings. I love it. I don't want to get too too deep, but I am curious, like, with what goes on now with everybody outside, you see crazy shit. Obviously, with what happened with Juice, did that change the way that you move or you go about things? Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. I, I, know, I know for a fact I, I haven't popped a per Percocet since. Since that situation with him, you know, just making me want to fall back off doing a lot of shit that I feel like wasn't really serving me no purpose. Yeah. You know, because you get so trapped into just wanting to feel feel something like you be out of touch with reality with that shit. Yeah. I feel like that's the thing is just certain rappers feel like they need to have some shit to perform or do the things they do. Mm-hmm. But then you learn if you can do it without it, then you can still like shrooms, great alternative. Like, yeah, or absolutely. maybe you, you know, you don't even need that yeah. Adderall. I mean, you can Hit stop the up. Adderall, no. you can take more shrooms, dude. <laughs> nah, because then I don't, you don't fall asleep on that shit. That's the problem. You don't mushrooms, fall asleep, but on you get shit done. <laughs> took my Adderall You've had some bangers. I know fucking rap star Martin and Gina, one of those was done with a 10, 30 milligram something. No, no, I was so little salmon bomber. <laughs> Have you tried any other psychedelics? Mm mm. No, like acid. Hell. No. I'm no, that's scary. next level. Yeah. Really? Too that. scared of that. That's intense, bro. Yeah, yeah. You've done acid? I haven't done acid yet. No, but it's a psychedelic. Just yeah. I would do that at I've a done show. ayahuasca. I'd do that though. at that's a polo show. You said, huh? I've done ayahuasca. Have you heard What's of that? that? You ever heard of that? Mm -mm. It's another plant medicine, but it's like the craziest version of. Uh, so I'm saying how it makes you feel. 
Oh man! Imagine like a, a lot of mushrooms, mm -hmm. but a lot more intense. Oh yeah, I'm scared yeah. of that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's the best way I can describe it. If you had any nothing to, to judge it from, what what are some of your favorite things to do outside of rap? Like, do you have anything? Any hobbies you do I like outside? To work of this? out. I see them. I like yeah. I I like to work out. Today was my first day working out again in like 15 days. I, I felt good as fuck after I worked out. I like to uh, play basketball. I hoop a lot. I play the video game 2K. I've been on the Nintendo Switch a lot lately. What are you what, playing what on that? Mario Kart. Yeah, oh, well, that's yeah. <laughs> Are you hooping with your boys? Hell yeah. Do they kind of like give you, like let you win type vibes? Because it looks like Drake. Like when we watch Drake, like it looks like no one's playing D on him. <laughs> no, I ain't going to lie. We get all, physical. We'll D your ass up if you want to take it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> no, nah, I, nah, I ain't gonna lie though. Uh, our games be pretty competitive. Yeah. How great, and I miss these. How great was the D Rose Thibodeau days? Man, I watch every game. His MVP year is like the most slept on, hardest year of an NBA player that didn't get respect. This made me watch. I watched a mixtape today on YouTube just of D Rose because we were doing this interview. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I fuck with Rose. That shit was crazy. What, bro? No, no, Have you no, ever watched Derrick Rose's I've seen, MVP I've year? Seen, I've seen the highlights. It sure. doesn't get the love it deserves straight uh, up. No, I think he, I think a, a lot of people fuck with Rose, though. Gone too soon, for sure, the injury, man. What's good? Are you still, like, watching the Bulls this year, even though Zoe's out? <laughs> yeah. Well, Zach Levine and you got you got a couple ballers on there. Yeah. The Bulls, I'm going to always support them, though. Even if, like, they was the worst in the East, I'm going to still support them. Where nice. else have you traveled to that's, like, one of your favorites? Egypt, anywhere else crazy? I've been I've been to Dubai. Dubai's dope. We were there recently. Yeah, I love it. I've been to uh I just recently went to Turks for my B day. How's Turks? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice as hell. I'm just trying to think about some other shit that I like. I like Dubai. I went on a tour in Europe though, but I ain't really like that shit. Bro. No. Why? I don't know. It was just was it probably something? too consistent like we was doing shows every day i didn't really get a chance to sleep i didn't really like that shit yeah i like london though i like paris too i never been there you've been there i've been to london yeah well paris. what do you think london's cool overrated I, I like more like personally like the warm parts of like paris was kind of dirty to me yeah <laughs> i'm being honest i gotta be honest i fucking love dubai i <laughs> dubai. love dubai, I love dubai, dubai is, bro man. yeah dubai is amazing. so beautiful uh who, who's is there any artists out there you've yet to work with you really want to do a project with her, like I even future maybe. No, I wouldn't say I I want to do a project with them. Someone you haven't like, like you could just love to do a track with. Um, cause I'm trying to think who the fuck having a Savage probably. Yeah, Twenty One Savage. He don't. He one of the only artists I haven't made a song with. One of the only top. Have artists. you met Drake? Him? Of course, I ain't make shit with him. Yet. That'll happen, I think. <laughs> yeah. That, that guy crazy. next to you could maybe make that happen. That He's from nice. Toronto. I'm trying to think, did I even ever make some shit with Trippy? Like, I made some shit with him, but, like, did it ever come out? I don't know. When you see, like, obviously there's a lot of big albums. Oh, yeah, I did. Me and him got that song with Dirk. You and Trippy? Yeah. It just hasn't come out? No, it did. Um, When you see these guys, other, like, big albums coming out, does that make you, like, get you excited? And you're like, fuck, I gotta, the pressure's on me now? No. I don't really be thinking about none anybody of that. else. I be trying to zone in on when I'm dropping. I've been ready the whole year. I know my. I mean, this whole time, I know my fans be on me. I don't even be wanting to be on Instagram because I know all they gonna ask me for is my album. But I'm. I be zoned in. You, you talked. You talked earlier about uh, going to, to. I think you were Paris Fashion Week. You went to yeah. Fashion Week. How, like, are you are you big into fashion? Is it like a thing that you like are passionate about outside of music? Yeah, it's something I'm truly trying to, like, do more outside. Like, if if it's any lane that I'll take outside of music where if I was to stop rapping something that I'd be into, it'd be fashion. Yeah. So I'm really trying to, like, feel shit out, yeah. get an understanding of how shit work. That was really the reason I went. Any inspirations specifically that you really, like, look up to or like? or? Uh, I can't touch on anything specifically, okay. but... Like as a whole, though, I'm in, I'm into the whole fashion culture. Yeah. What else do you do to like stay level headed? I saw I saw one of your interviews. You say you do like morning like affirmations and stuff like that. What, what's kind of stuff that you do to keep your head clear? Yeah, the the the, the, uh, the affirmations give me a lot of clarity. 
Uh, sometimes I just like, if I do end up driving, like I'll drive a short distance, like somewhere I'm going there and back just to get, just to clear my head. I sometime. love driving, clear my head when I drive. But that's, that's pretty much, I'm pretty. Uh, pretty you don't pretty meditate nothing like that? Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe the <laughs> mushrooms that have you meditate? No, I, I meditated before though. Yeah. Did it help or? Yeah, it do, but that shit's so hard to be focused. Like, you mean, <laughs> well, what? You just got to really sit there and like and tone do, everything and just, out? Yeah. <coughs> Focus on breathing and just chill. But it's hard. I think you could probably want to come back to what you're doing. Yeah. Well, it's just like, I don't, I can't, because I feel like meditating, you supposed to clear your mind completely. That's and that's hard, hard for me. Yeah. What do you think's your most memorable show you've ever performed at? That's hard. I saw you brought out, is, I'm sorry, is it on a, where your niece does the intro? That's my little sister. Or your little sister. I brought her out to Rolling Loud one time. Damn. How crazy. And how do you even think to have her on the intro of the track? That was, that was actually my mama idea. That's so great. You know, is that the A Polo G? Yeah. 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 What song is that again? Through the Storm. Through oh, the Storm, yeah. 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 Again. So that just kind of was like Through a random thing slaps. and it works out? Yeah, because everybody like... I was just in Paris and somebody said it to me. <laughs> like somebody ran up on a, hey, big brother, it's me. Some shit like that. So I, I didn't think it was going to be that memorable, but it'd be little moments you need like that in a project and an album. Because I saw that clip when you had her come out at Rolling Loud. Is mm -hmm. that something where like you get emotional and you're like, damn, this is crazy or is it just like kind of funny? It's just crazy looking <laughs> back on, on it. Because when I came, can we, can we pull that up? I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. Bro. When I did it, I wasn't thinking how, about how it. old was she at the time? His, his probably, she was him. younger than Polo seven G. years old. Because that's if a not fucking so. crowd. Yeah, massive. My was little she sister, she like a star. She wasn't nervous at all. No, she you, was. You, star. How, how often shit, do you do that, or is that the one and only time? I did it probably like three times. That's fucking dope. You were so you were talking about uh, people come up to you and like saying stuff about stuff that you've done. What's the weirdest interaction you've ever had with like a fan or someone coming up to you? Have you ever any, anything strange happen? I can't really recall because so much should be happening. <laughs> so much should be happening. Yeah. I can't really recall a specific moment. <laughs> <laughs> she skip all. Oh yeah, she gave no fucks, eh? <laughs> I want that bitch you, just yelling. You ever were you ever nervous doing any of this stuff? No, in the beginning, because I really just did my performances like fuck it. Like you never were nervous. You were never but like the nervousness came when I dropped a song like Rap Star. And they was putting me on all the big stages. So it's like now people really critiquing me for my performances. Like, he don't have his in ears. His production ain't right. He ain't uh, doing this. He ain't really? doing that. And I'm like, damn. Oh, Back then, yeah. I'm doing a 15-minute set. So people not really thinking too much. But now I'm up there. I got to stand up in 45 minutes. I got to work the stage, have my breath control. So then it came like. People start feeling like I ain't the best performer, but it's like something I'm working on. I don't really get mad at it though, because I know where it comes. Part of the process, and I know for a fact leading up to now, like I had stage fright. Like a lot of times, I get up there. I was getting up there and feeling like I need to psych myself out. I probably need to be intoxicated before I do the show. Take a little shot. Yeah, some because that's like I was getting them jitters. No, do you drink like or anything before shows? Yeah, sometimes. I but now gonna, I don't need it though, because now I've been like I've been working on my shit. I was gonna know? say though, one of the biggest, like the craziest things, if you think about it, is like years ago, you would like have experience, but now you can put a like have a banger, right? Go viral on TikTok, whatever, and then you're just expected to perform in front of the biggest crowd of people ever. And yeah, then people, you know what so, I'm saying? Because you go so, so viral so judge. quick, and then it's like, fuck, I'm, I'm not used to this. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what he was talking about the criticism because the massive, like the bigger, the bigger audiences, but like. You're working on it. What what kind of things have you done to work on that part? Like, are you going like stage presence type stuff? Like yeah, like classes, uh, classes to work on my stage presence. Like breathing techniques. Not even that. Um, just like certain. Shit. Eating a fucking gram of shrooms, bro, and just saying fuck it. Dude, that's it. Honestly, <laughs> that's the fucking move. Bro. That's it. No, I ain't never I can go two ways. No shrooms, though. That's that a scam. No, that could, could go, go two it, ways. I believe in you. No, that could go two I'll ways. I probably tried though. I ain't gonna lie. You just could even act a little tiny bit. Just take the edges off. You know. 
be good. Yeah, but you could act like a complete crazy person up there too, and then it could go really Not, well. But really if you bad. take a lot, yeah, if you take a lot. But if you take a, just a little bit, no, you take the edge off, you'll be nice for sure. If I get to tripping on stage while I'm off the show, I'm going to walk off. <laughs> <laughs> Polo G walks off, yeah. Hey, good luck. Do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have anything big coming up? Like any festivals or anything you're excited to do? No, I don't really. Uh, I don't really got nothing. I'm trying to just put a tour together for my project. Hopefully, I drop my project uh, in the springtime. So is that the one with Southside? Yeah. How many tracks do you have? Like, in your are you selecting at this point? You have like hundred tracks ready to go, and you just pick or? Yeah, but I know, like, I got. Uh, more than about 25 solid tracks that could potentially go on the album, but I wouldn't go past 20. I wouldn't even hit the 20 mark. Yeah, what's is there any logic behind that? Like, yeah, how, do you, ask, how do you pick, like, yo, I want to put 20 on this, or you want to save some? Like, how do you pick the exact number? Like, I feel like streaming is different now. Yeah. That doing a 20-pack of songs don't really make sense because in the, meet, in the meetings, like, I, I could remember, it's like almost like back in school when you had grades and shit. And they say, if you get 100 on the paper, but you get a zero, that bring your shit all the way down. It's the same shit with music. You got yeah. 20 songs on here. And uh, for like for shit like first week numbers, you mm-hmm. got 20 songs on here and five of them didn't do shit, but the rest yeah. of them did. That's oh, just dragging it. a I'm number I'm not going to be that so, guy right now, but this was posted, but like Ice Spice, I'm not a huge fan, but... She posted or she did an album with only six songs on it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, damn, that's well, nothing. I think what but you're saying, EP. what you're saying is that like you you need I haven't more heard one quality. Ice Spice like yeah. if you don't want to have twenty songs and <laughs> yeah, someone just kind of whatever. Yeah, and they're not getting enough plays. It'll affect your stream. What's your thoughts yeah. on Ice Spice? I feel like she's a dope artist. She's got bangers. I'm not a girl, so I haven't heard one of. Her no, songs. I don't listen to that shit. I feel I like the girl. Heard shut the fuck like up! You're playing it on the way over here. What's her song? What's the biggest track? <laughs> That's what? funny as fuck. My boy's a Lizzo fan right here. What's good with you, bro? You were playing it on the way. I feel I like she him. do got hit songs though, for sure. Well, she's everywhere, bro. Like Academics is supposed to be her biggest shit? song. I don't know. Munch, I don't listen. To, I'm on Polo's I'm, next album, bro. Yeah. Like I'm waiting for that. That's what I'm talking about. Man. I'm listening to Epidemic 33, 21 all day, bro. Like, oh, so <laughs> you were listening to that Munch song on the way over here. Straight up, where's your boy with the food, too? Text him, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. Uh, I took a fucking lie. detour, bro. <laughs> Tell me, could smoke in the back. Look, Fuck. they ate the food already for sure. I ain't gonna lie, that food always taking. Do long you time. um, do you like go out a lot, or do you? Or is that not your thing? Or I really don't like to go out, but. I will. Like, a lot of times I go out just to, so we ain't bored as a group. Like, we all sitting in the crib, like, flies on the wall. I'm like, all right, man, let's just go to the club or something. You like doing you know? that shit? No, I don't really like going out, though. I hate it, bro. I hate that's, it. I think Sonny wanted to invite you out tonight. If you want to come out, he's going to invite you out. I mean, you can if you want. That, yeah. make, that makes me look well, cooler than I am. Pop out too. You're, you have a song called Pop Out and you're not going to pop out. Like, that's... Man. Yeah. Pop, yeah, like, what's up? He's heard that before, probably, man. For have sure. Have you heard that for before? For sure. That's a brutal That's line. like when they're like, yo, how much you bitch to me, bro? I would hate to, to hear that, like, dude. <laughs> uh, What is... If you had to, like... I guess narrow it down to a, pro, a passion project or something you've always wanted to do or something that you really want to do, what would you say would be? Like, even if it required leaving your lane a little bit from what you're used to. You saying music-wise? Yeah. Uh, I would want to make a conscious album, like something that don't got nut shit to do with really like street life as far as like glorifying it in any sense. And I'm one of the rappers, one of the art, one of the artists that don't really glorify it as much, but I still won't say like I ain't got a line to say this, that, and the third. But like I really wanna, like the older I get, I wanna stray away from that style of music because I don't wanna be 30 rapping about killing the art. Yeah. You no. Know? I saw too that you did, did you just now sponsor the AAU team from Chicago? I had did that a while back. You still doing that? Uh, no. When you, when you say you're gonna steer away from, like the uh, the street shit. What do you steer into? You said the conscious stuff. The con- the but what is like some of the conscious content. stuff? Like just speaking on world problems, world issues. Like more mature shit. Yeah, basically. Got Even it. what stuff from like relationship what? shit, like everything that's going on the, going going on in the world. Is there anything that you're passionate about that's like going on in the world right now? Yeah, like 
you know, the, the usual shit, the police brutality, shit like that. Just anything, any type of oppression, period. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, so working with Clueless, one of the biggest bangers, worked with, was it Fabio and Pop Smoke? <laughs> why funny. is that? Why do you guys laugh? Dude, at he's that just shit? sorry, sorry. I, why? I just, I'm a student I of the just, game, bro. I know, I love it. I actually do love it, it's bro. I so... love rap music so much. We've done a lot of no joke. On the we show. gotta talk about this before we ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Every time we have an artist, like a, a rap artist, he mm -hmm. like is a different person. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing. He's so hyped. He's like answering the door. I, I love rap music, bro. He I does. Like no, that. I respect it. I told, yeah, but I just no, like, I, I like how excited no, you get. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not even talking shit. The first interview I ever did on the show was Kodak, so it was like huge for me. Yeah, I went. Because I love him. It went great. Okay. I'm still here. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead, though. Go ahead, though. You I don't, don't even know what I was saying, bro. You like interrupted a really I'm so sorry. Just the way clueless. you said it, you're like, so clueless. Pop smoke. Oh, yeah, one, yeah, one yeah, of the no, biggest no, bangers. Let's talk about that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that's Yo. why we laugh. Just the way you presented it. I love but it. But two New York legends, obviously. But yeah. uh, that song's a banger, bro. You could have done a lot more, obviously, with Pop Smoke. Yeah. Is there ever anything where you're working with guys from different backgrounds of like New York or maybe Florida or wherever that makes it different? No. Or Atlanta, I, I guess. I really merge well with like artists, like depending on their sound. But I fuck with Pop Smoke and they and, and the whole drill sound, you know, coming from Chicago, like that's where that shit started at. So like I really tapped into their shit. Like I hit up Pop, like. Yo, let's do this. He had been hitting me up in the past, but before I knew who he was. And then when I seen they wave going strong, I hit him like, yo, I fuck with y'all shit. Let's do something. It's crazy. Did, did you work with him in the studio? Yeah, Pop. I, I worked with him. The craziest thing, I worked with him like right before he passed. Like I was in the studio with him. He said he leaving to L.A. Damn. I stayed in New York an extra day to get make sure Fabio laid his verse. And Pop, they was uh, a, a contact was telling me Pop wanted to get in the stoop in L.A. the night he passed. Damn. Because I'm I live there, he lived there. We supposed to get up. How talented was he in the studio? Like, what what was his process? It's crazy like? too. Was he Real, quick or more like right. methodical with his? No, yeah, he was quick. He quick. He asked me he's went uh for the bar where he say I'm downtown Chicago or Michigan Ave. He like, what's a popular spot everybody go to in Chicago? And he threw it in a song. He yeah. named Dude, his spot. He would have been fucking. Yeah, huge, I, I, bro. I I let him know like uh, everybody be on Michigan. Now. It's crazy because you when that song when you guys were recording you were probably both like what 20, 19? Yeah, and I ain't know he was that young though. I know he's like, the same age, bro. About yeah, crazy. Little brolic, he got the face you had deep voice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga like way older than that. And so when I seen, they say he was only like 20. I'm like, what the fuck? He was ahead of his time for sure. He was versatile too. Like yeah. He started out with really hard shit, but then yeah. we, he could start making like chick songs and like he was singing. Yeah. Like he would have been one of the biggest, bro. Yeah, was he was, he was man. talented, man. Crazy. Fuck. So you got what, 10 whips now? Mm -hmm. How many, what do you, what other, how many other chains you got at home? I don't, I don't know. I know I got a lot of them bitches though. But I, I need to stop buying them so much. You got, you got a new but, crib too? Yeah, I got the career probably like a year ago. Go. How much did that run you? I don't know if you've said that. Can I ask that? It cost me like three hundred thousand. Yeah, no. the this iPhone was, chain. This was three fifty. Yeah, bro, you, that you took just that rented. That's just for this bit, dude. Yeah, that's no, not I yours. Know. But this is. Three well, you what? What jewelry you went to? Him? Uh, uh, this up and coming guy, Happy Jewelers. They're not like quite icebox yet, but uh, they're gonna get there. It's not his, by the my way. He's just holding it for this. He rents chains. That's what he does. I don't rent. I no, have, like factual. I'm I have not a even collection, kidding. but like I also like to like I told these guys, bro. Like you got to fall in love with it, so I'm not gonna buy it until I know I really like it. <laughs> that's that's smart, bro. Yeah. Okay. See, okay. So fuck you, Brad. No, it's not even true, though. You're just doing that. <laughs> You're just doing that for this. He does. He has to honest. do story promos to to like. No, that was my gym. promo to wear this yeah, right now. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. No, it's all good. Like though, now but. he didn't even have to pay to have that on right now. No, it's all good, bro. I'm gonna do something crazy with this one though, for real. What are you gonna do with it? Don't worry about it. Boy with the food. Where did they go? Yeah, I'm hungry. They so went hungry. to uh, Chef Grill. <laughs> Does it ever piss you off? I'm like, yo, my boys God. went back with my food and it's been an hour and a half or no? Nah? That was such they a- gonna, They going to go to my There's friend. There's four detours, bro. Yeah, they Bro's at the strip on, club with the Jack in the Box right now with the bag. Club. Yeah, 100%. They going to go to 50 other places. You guys <laughs> ever hit the strip club? Yeah, hell yeah. We what's just what's the most you've ever thrown on a strip club? 
I yeah. don't throw no lot of money in the strip club. No. I'm known for not throwing a yeah. lot of money in the strip club. That's good. Yeah, You're like, yo, pull it. I love that. That's good. I so wait, I love is he just the back table it, or what? You're good. He's just sitting there like this. You yeah. Sit, like, like, yo, Polo's coming in there like, okay. Uh, Martin <laughs> Joe in line like everybody else. I had to learn, though, like, that's probably fucked up to just sit in the club and not so I, slowly but surely. But my trick is I'm going to come in there for, like, five minutes, and if I throw... Five thousand or twenty five hundred dollars, I leave right out. So it seemed like I yeah. do a nice yeah, amount of money. Yeah, that's good for five minutes. Bro, it's so funny. I love it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean, not wasting money. You don't need to waste money. Do you ever go to clubs and like test your tracks out, like unreleased shit? Hell no. Never. Oh, nobody hear this shit till it drop. Well, going off that, yeah. Well, I was we saw say Metro that. said that, right? Do you ever show like there's a? But I feel like I got more like serious music. Like I don't really make club music. Like. Do you have someone specifically you go to and say, yo, I want your honest opinion. Do you like this before I put it out? Or is it question. all just is I it like all that. just on you? Like, I'm taking all this. I play I play music for my family, like my immediate family, like my brother. Like everybody who I work with and my team too, like I got a family bond with them. So mm -hmm. like everybody gonna tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always like they know I'm a bug with it too. Like you fuck with this for real, man. Yeah. This shit hard for real. Like tell me the truth. I don't want nobody around me. Like yeah, this air thing hard. Cause I, I has there ever been a track you've taken to them and been like, yo, bro, this shit sucks. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm saying I go to them like I will play some shit for them. Like man, that shit weak to me. Like like they they tell them you tripping. Yeah. You know? How, what what tracks have you put out? Any tracks you put out that blew the fuck up and you were just like. I had no idea that I was gonna do. That's that I say. Pop out was one. You didn't know that was gonna blow up. I I, I mean, didn't know it was gonna be track, as big as it was. You can't predict that yeah. success. That shit. How many views does that have? Was it Finer Things big too? Yeah, yeah. Finer Things is big. Well, dude, we've which one you have the most distractions fun a banger that I had the most fun. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I say a song like Never Care, even though it's a remix. No, it's a banger. It's yeah. A, um, Cause I was still, I was still in the trenches, <laughs> and I know I was gonna turn the trenches up with that. What's the song with uh, that you have with uh, Nardo? Uh, what's this called? Damn, I feel like it's G, a G Nikes. Or... Yeah, yeah, it's a banger too. Fuck with that. Gang, gang, right? That's with Lil Wayne. Yeah. What was it yeah. like doing a track with him? He's an OG legend. I ain't even know Wayne was gonna get on that song. My, my, uh, my A and R biz, he beat. He um he put that play together. He just played it for me in the stool. And I just hear Wayne come on that bed. And I'm like, I get to tripping before I could even hear it. Like, <laughs> Wait, you like, didn't even know that you no, got it? No, I you just, just heard it? Yeah, and I'm like, damn, man, hell no. Nah. Run it back, run it back, run it back. And now I'm listening to it. And like on the first time, listen, I'm just steady reacting to Ab Bach because he really fucking me up. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, that's lie. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I ain't that that shit tripped me. And then out, after, bro. like, he's just like, yeah, like you got the feature. Hell yeah, I was happy as hell. That's fucking. That's, that's Lil that's, Wayne, that's man. What does that do for you Wayne. when he's uh, like just an OG? I guess at this point. Uh, I know it was like crazy for me to just hide that feature, just see it, like shooting a video with him and shit. Like I don't really talk to people, no matter how I feel mm -hmm. about them. Like I'm really not that much of a social person, but I know like. Seeing the shit and just knowing what I had just did was fucking with me. Like, damn, I really just made a song with Lil Wayne. I was listening to him when I was probably like I'm fucking 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. Do you have any other moments like that? Like, I made it moments where you're like, damn, this is special. Like, music-wise or just life? Yeah, shit. Living down there. Because it's like going through the motions of being where I'm at now in comparison to where I was. Yeah. A lot of shit different. Sometimes I just realize that and just be like, damn, I am blessed, you know. I wanna know what I think I think we all probably think about this, but what you miss most about more of like the struggle and the come up as opposed to now being here where you're at now. It's really just not being as known. Yeah. That 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 you 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 really have way more peace and being a uh like not a famous person than being somebody who just a celebrity because it's like you not people feel like you don't deserve to have privacy have privacy want to rest if i'm out in public you know how many people 
like wanted to damn near get into it with me just because I didn't want to take a picture at a specific time while I'm out with my son and I'm telling them I don't want to take a picture right now. It's yeah. a lot of crazy is, shit. People this, have no sympathy. The the more famous you get, it's also because yeah. they just think you're rich. Know, too. Just, like, man, Kanye he's rich. What recently. is he fucking... Recently, there was a thing with Kanye and like he, the TMZ pulled up on him and he was like trying to go see his his like uh, his like kid or something like at a game and mm. he was like really mad. He was and, outside the car shit. Yeah. And Take then he like phone. jumped down like drew a girl's phone and all this shit. But I, I totally understand what you're saying. Like I, I think it's hard because at the same time, I don't think we can go like, oh, you know, don't treat us that way or don't treat a celebrity that way. Because, mm. you know... I mean, if you're putting yourself in that position to be looked at or viewed in this way, mm-hmm. you, you can't, you kind of have to learn how to live in it. But have you ever had any moments like that where you felt like super uncomfortable with someone like, yo, I need this from you. You have to take this picture. You need to do this. Yeah, a lot of times. And um, How do you react to it? People won't give up too. Right? If I they mean, ask for a photo. Sometimes like if I know I'm a fucking bullshit, then I'll just try to ignore them, shut the shit off. Like, you feel me? But sometimes, like, even it, it's not even a moment where they where they telling me, like, damn, you ain't going to take the picture. Like, so I don't like to tell nobody no that I don't want to yeah. take a picture with them. Like, so that's the last thing that I want to do. So yeah. sometimes it fuck with my head if I see a motherfucker bummed out that I ain't taking nah, a picture with them. What's been, I want to just, honestly, personally, just know when you're back, when you're recording, when you're trying to take off, right? What's the biggest difference when you're trying to get studio time? Like, is it a more of like a hustle? Like, yo, we got to get this together. No one respects me type thing. As opposed to now, obviously, you're this big name. So in the beginning, what's that like when you're really trying to get the studio time? Are you even in a studio? Are you just recording for SoundCloud? You know what I mean? No, I was in the studio for sure. Just really trying to make the most of the moment. Like, going on a two-hour session, four-hour session, paying for it, scraping up little dollars. To go there and I had to be on time. I had to be ready. I had to make sure I had all my shit together so that it's gonna be a a, a good session. Now I'm probably gonna pull up two, three hours late for <laughs> shit for the first four hours and then finally make some shit. Like now I can relax. Is it crazy in the beginning when you look back and it's like no one really respected you or knew who you was and now it's like, yo, I show up when the fuck I want. <clears throat> Yeah, it was like I had to break through a lot of barriers. I'm still breaking through them today, though. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I'm. I feel like I'm at my best, or I'm at the top of my career. But like, I still got a long way to go. Mm-hmm. It's crazy too, because I feel like we've been banging since we heard in 2019. You know, your first tracks like that were on Spotify, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like we've kind of come up with every track that you come out. Like we're looking forward to. Um, so it's you're still so new to the game. Yeah, I feel like that sometimes, though. Because you you look at it, and I even go to Spotify, and I'm like, damn, his his first album, 2019. Like, that's mm-hmm. not that long ago. Yeah. Super new. Super new. Yeah. Like, so how how is that so different from others who, like, you look at, then you're like, fuck, this guy had a mixtape in 2012, like 2013. But my shit's so recent, and I'm still on the up. It's, it it makes me realize, like, the type of effect my music had that I can sit with the people who've been more experienced. But then again, now it's like it put more eyeballs on you to like, is he going to stand the test of time? Yep. Like, yeah. Is he going to be here for a long time? No. Is that is that any sort of scare that you have? Like, fuck, like, what if I don't stay on top like I am now? Or mm. pressure? I mean, it's pressure, but I don't really be scared of that because I know me staying true to myself alone going to keep me where I'm at. Yeah. And I think you're you're known for like your music's just fire. Like you're not really one for antics, and like you don't see your going like, viral for doing dumb shit. Like hundred percent, you have I'm, such a loyal fan base. Even like your IG is so fucking active. It's crazy, like you just have bro. a diehard fan base because your music's fire. Yeah, I feel like, and that's what <laughs> separate me from a lot of other artists. Like I, ain't, you don't know me from no type of beef. Nothing, you don't know no. me from shit, yeah. but my music, and I try to keep. I keep my pride. Private life, private for that reason. I don't want to be known for shit else besides rapping until I venture off and do something else, you know? Why did you have that mindset? Have you always had that or someone teach you That's that? Dope. Like, was yeah. it something that you, you can say being just brought up the way that I was brought up? Like, and I'm, and I, and I was one person that listened to the older people around me. So, I got probably like an older mindset. Like, I don't want to be in bullshit. What were some of those older, mentalities they gave you just like stay off the street shit or not even that just like just being wise to a lot of shit that 
I shouldn't be involved in or that I shouldn't get too much of my attention to. Nice. Do you, any of those people, like, specifically, do you want to speak on them? Like, is Yeah, that- like, my pops, for sure. That's the person been in my mind the whole time I was saying. That's really the main person. Like, yeah. he really been there for me every step of the way. So, it's like I learned a lot from him. Yeah. You take care of your whole family? Is that something you do? Hell yeah. yeah. Everybody, ain't nobody, don't, don't nobody around me going for shit. Everybody spoiled. <laughs> yeah, we could tell. Fucking, yeah, it's been an cars. hour and a half. For, I'm hungry as a motherfucker, bro. Hit up your boy. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? All the boys went home, <laughs> took a whip out. Yeah, they're at home smoking at the crib, taking every whip out. And we're here, hungry. How as many fuck. bedrooms is the crib? Um, I think it's like eight. Do you do you ever go back to Chicago or? Yeah, Damn. but I like the bigger I get as an artist, the less I go back. So it's really like it's that serious there, huh? It ain't even that. It's like that shit don't be like it. Like it ain't even no point. Like yeah. it, it, it used to be a time when I was first coming up. Around the time I dropped my first album, I used to still be on my block. Like damn that air month of the year. Then you go to a time like last year that just passed. I I I'll, I'll take a year break off of going back to my neighborhood. I don't. It, it ain't the same because so much shit to go on like a death or whatever the case sure. may be. It's like it killed a neighborhood. I'm. I have to ask you, what is it like with your success now going back to where you came up? How do you get treated? It's 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 always none but love. I really love fucking with the like the younger kids, just tweeting with them all day. They'll crowd me and stand around me all day, won't let me breathe. I gotta talk to them, kick it with them and long enough to be like, all right, y'all go here now. Is it crazy to think like you give a lot of people hope when you go back? Like, yo, look at Polo now. Hell yeah, it's crazy to think because I ain't had nobody to give me that type of inspiration. It's great. Yeah, this was lit. Yeah, we gotta do <laughs> a. Back we should them. do a house. Bro, they tour really for the took a long time. <laughs> yeah, do, you want to do time? some or whenever? Yeah, we gotta do something for the Nelk video too. This is uh, obviously the full sun podcast, but we gotta do one more thing with you. This was fucking amazing, bro. For sure. Thank God, you yo, you responding to, do? to my DM has done a lot for me, so I appreciate yeah, you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with it. Yeah, I'm down. You guys got anything else? Are we good? I think that was fire. I'll see you at the gym. Polo, motherfucking G. When can we expect the next? release or when are you looking to put more music out? Uh, I'm going to drop some in February. I got some coming in February. Man, stay tuned. Ooh, I'm let's go, game. baby. All right, thank you, bro. I appreciate, appreciate, you. appreciate, appreciate it, bro. y'all, yeah. man. Hell yeah. Appreciate y'all, Thank man. you, bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. That was big for me personally, so fuck all you guys. That was a big land for styling, bro. Holy shit. Yeah, that was a fire wow. episode. <laughs> let's go, baby. I guess the bot followers work. Hey, Little bro. does he know you have fucking 150k. Don't matter. No, I got at least 250, but yo, it don't matter. We got him. We got the episode. That was a fire episode. It's a good one.